You know, one thing I've learned about these housewife shows is that they are all literally co-workers because on every season of any of these housewife shows, I have heard the same thing. I haven't seen so-and-so in a while. New York ain't that big. Atlanta ain't that big. Beverly Hills ain't that big. Jersey ain't that big. They all say the same thing. I haven't seen each other in uh, this so-and-so in a while. So for me, that's saying we are coworkers. We are not really friends because how do you go without seeing one of your really good friends that you live in the same city within the same vicinity neighborhood and you haven't seen them in a month or two or however long the break is that they have for these shows sometimes you know one to two to three months and you haven't seen that person you've just texted and talked i text and talk on the phone with my best friends or like even friends who i'm like really close with because they live on the other side of the country like if we lived in the same city, I would see them often. It's just so weird to me that they don't see each other yet they spend all this time together when they're filming this show. To me that says we are coworkers and that's it. Which makes sense because you think about the things that these women say and do to each other. They tweet nasty things about each other while the season is going. They write terrible blogs. Then they destroy each other during these reunions. They shade each other in confessionals. It really, really does make sense. I think when when... I think when these shows start, they start off as friends, then they break off and become co-workers, which can give us a better show. Because when you're a co-worker, you're not afraid to really go in on somebody because it's a show and this is your job and you're giving us what we really need. So it makes sense, but I've noticed that every housewife show, somebody has said that I haven't seen so-and-so in a really long time. I haven't seen her in weeks. I haven't seen her in a month. But you're going to be filming almost every day of your life with this person after you haven't seen them for a month? Y'all not friends. Y'all co-workers. So, the ladies are addressing Luann's costume. And you know what? I'm okay with how they discussed it. Because to me, this is believable. I think white, rich, upper crust women from New York City would talk about it like that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think... Any, any of them aside from Carol wouldn't really have a problem because they've seen worse at their Halloween parties. You know what I mean? And it's okay if that person isn't there or, you know what I mean? Like, I just, it made sense. Like, it made sense that Carol was the one to bring it up and the one to be really offended by it because Carol is that girl. You know what I mean? Like, she's the wokest one out of all of them. Um, none of them are really woke, let's be real, but like, you know what I mean? So it made sense that Carol would bring it up. And Ramona's response, not shocked. Bethany's response, not shocked. Uh, Tinsley, not shocked. And even, um, Dorinda, who I wasn't, it wasn't, I won't say like I'm not shocked, but she would be the one who would have the discussion with Carol about how the outfit was offensive and they would really have a serious conversation about it, but trying to bring something like that up to friends who don't really think it's an issue it's just like a lost cause you know what i mean and it's it's not it's not important enough because it's not really their issue to really go into it so i'm glad that it was brought up again um i'm also glad that luann was called out because she was on watch what happens live let me tell you something i don't stay up late enough to watch watch what's happening live <laughs> i'm trying to get up early because i've been doing this vegetable diet but now i'm getting into the exercise i haven't gotten to the exercise yet but one day i will get up early enough to do it Anyway, I just, I never really watch watch What Happens Live and I made sure to watch it that night because I wanted to hear Luann's response to her Halloween costume. And she was just like, oh no, I didn't do anything to darken my skin. I just put on some self tanner. It's just some self, some bronzer, what I normally put on every day, but every housewife clocked that she put on something to make her skin darker. Luann, you have been exposed, have several seats. You know what? I'm team Carol on this uh, situation with her and Luann. Like, I feel a little way, you know, when she comes for Luann, like how she says it so heartless and like careless like the comments she makes about you know her going on her divorce tour and you know just really not taking or giving Luann any sympathy for what for what she's going through which is a lot right now right but we also have to look back to several seasons ago where Luann was dragging Carol in every confessional. Every time she had any kind of camera time, she was dragging Carol because she was upset that she was dating Adam who used to date her niece or whatever. It was just a really messy situation. And I, for at one, at one time, 
I was on Luann's side because I was just like, Carol, you're dating somebody. Like, it's her family member. So Luann, maybe she would not have been as invested in Adam being younger than you or whatever. We all know Luann. She would have been jealous, you know what I mean? Because Adam is young and hot. But she would not have cared as much, right? But it's the fact that her niece used to date him and was still kind of feeling him when Carol came up and snagged him. So she had to, at least on camera, give off the effect that she was not okay with it so that her niece could be okay with her. Totally understand it. However, I feel like Luann went too far with it. The comment she was making about Carol was really low and Carol was not even doing anything like that to Luann because she she was not aware. And I guess watching the show and at the reunion, she found out all, all of these things. And since then, their relationship has just been tainted. And I really feel like the only one who's really hurt in this situation is Luann because she feels like because I'm a countess I want to be close with the princess but the princess don't want nothing to do with her which is very understandable because Luann is very nasty at times and I know she took a beating last season and the season before last but man the way she did Carol guys I'm team Carol on this one I understand where she is and just because she's going through a hard time she doesn't have to give her sympathy when Luann didn't give her any especially when she went through her thing with Adam especially when Luann was dragging her for seasons talking about her and her relationship with Adam and I feel in a way making it probably really difficult for them in the beginning so I don't you know Carol is coming off real cold right but I understand <laughs> Now, Ramona, we know good and well that Kirk don't want you or oh, any woman. Let's stop playing these games, girl. So let's get into the fashion. So far, so good, I might say. The ladies are looking great, especially Dorinda. If you watch my previous reviews, you know that I have always gone up for Dorinda. Dorinda has always slayed every, except for that, um, that, that Halloween costume, but I'm not counting that. But every scene, every confessional, mother has always consistently slayed. Consider this walking outfit where she's walking with Sonya. Sonya also looks good too, but to me, I feel like Sonya is trying. Like this is very put on. This like, evening gown that she's wearing with these winter boots. Like, I don't understand what's going on. But I feel like Dorinda is the most realistic. I feel like she's been dressing like this her entire life. Like she's had this eye or she's been this fly. It's nothing that she's getting help with. It's nothing, it's nothing that she's paying somebody really to do. I feel like this is who she is because this walking outfit, I'm here for her casual walking Gucci. Yeah. That Louis. I'm broke. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. How old is Sonya's daughter? Because I feel like she's been in boarding school since Sonya has been on this show. And like she talks about her like she's really young. How old is Sonya? I thought she was in her 60s. So could she? No. You know what? She probably could have like a 12 year old. But what? How old is Sonya? How old is this daughter? Wait. Something ain't adding up. She's still in boarding school? Is she 30? What's going on? <laughs> Another season and Sonya is still jealous of Tinsley. However, I'm here for her dropping this Tinsley tea. <laughs> because Ramona has said that Tinsley don't have a pot to piss in her family and got no money. At least not enough money to pay for $10,000 for that um suite that she's living in or whatever. That hotel uh room. Oh, Jesus. It's natural hair does what it wants. Anyway, she's saying that her family can't afford that. And I remember last season when Tinsley was like looking at like studios and her and her mom were like, mm -mm, this is too expensive. But I was just like, I thought y'all had money. But I, I forgot that she married into the Mortimer family. And that's like the name. Those are the people that have money. But I thought she at least had a coin, but this seemed like she ain't got it. So I do believe that if the guy is paying, he's paying her portion. I told you like Bravo pays her to film at her location. So I guarantee you Tinsley's probably, or the dude is probably paying like 5,000 and Bravo, and Bravo is splitting it. Cause that's normally how they do it so that they can have um, free range to like film in your apartment and do your scenes. So she's probably gonna have a lot of scenes in this new place because that is essentially gonna pay her rent for at least half the time that she's there. So I mean, if the guy is paying for her, why are you hating Sonya? Why are you jealous? Because ain't nobody paying for your little sweet. Stop hating. Stop hating. I'll pop the pissing. <laughs> Whew. This season is so much better than everything that I've watched. Step it up, Beverly Hills. You know what? I love that Dorinda. She's a real one. Because even though she's not like that close with Tinsley, she was defending her because she just felt uncomfortable that Ramona was saying these things about her because she knew that Ramona was jealous. Like she knew where it was coming from. And it was just like, 
like she understood why Tinsley did not feel comfortable. I mean, everybody who watched the season understood because Ramona was nasty to her. I think a lot of people who have been in the kind of situation where you did not have a place and you needed to stay with someone and that person went from being, oh my goodness, you can stay here to as soon as you got to their apartment or house or whatever, treating you like garbage. Because what you don't know is that that person saw you a certain way or was jealous of you and couldn't wait to get you in their home so they can mistreat you because that jealousy has to go somewhere. Well, you're in their home, there's, she's taking shots at Tinsley. She's saying all the nasty things because Tinsley is essentially a younger Sonya. You know what I mean? She's blonde, she's skinny, she's married into money, she's out and about, she's young, she's dating whoever she wants, she still probably can have children. Like there are, there's a lot of things that Sonya wishes that she could still do that she sees Tinsley doing and she doesn't like her for it. And I think it also happens a lot on these housewife shows where a lot of the older women go after the younger women for just being young. And it's really, really ugly. I really respect the ones who are older, who sit in just aging and loving life, like Carol. Like she really just ages, ages gracefully. Like she's like, I'm 50, you know? And she's just, she's how I want to get older. You know what I mean? Like she's older, but she's living life and she's enjoying each and every moment. And I think that came from when she lost her husband and then um, she lost her best friend who was John John's wife and John John in the same. So it was a lot. She had a lot of death in her life. And so I think from that, like a lot of people that she loves, I think from that she was just like, you know what? I'm going to live my life. And I think maybe that's where that comes from. I don't know if Sonya had anything like that, but it's just so ugly to see her come after Tinsley because we can clearly see her jealousy because she can't hide it at all. I have a theory. I don't think that Tinsley and Scott broke up. I think that Tinsley was on a chopping block for last season because myself and a lot of other fans did not think she really brought anything. It was just like, you know, watching paint dry with Tinsley scenes. I couldn't stand them. She didn't get interesting until she started to have a relationship with Scott. So I feel like they're in a good place and they're probably seriously dating. However, which is why Sonya probably said that he's paying her rent. However, I feel like Tinsley wants to make herself or try to make herself like, you know, uh, more delicious <laughs> to Andy so that she could come on the next season. So I guess maybe in her pitch trying to get back on the show was, well, me and Scott broke up. You guys can really film that. I'll be an open book for that. So I feel like that's the game that they're playing. And I feel like he loves her enough that he'll go with it because it just, it doesn't, I don't feel it. I don't feel that they're really broken up. I feel like she's giving too much effort like too much storyline for me to like really follow it and then it's not matching up like the thing she's saying is not matching up with how she's reacting I don't know I feel like her and Scott have well Tinsley has cooked this up and Scott is going along with it because he loves her but I don't think they're broken up I do not think that they're having any issues I think that this is just Tinsley making herself more desirable so, so that she could come back on the show oh, can we talk about how Luann is transitioning into a black woman I mean <laughs> I said uh, afro one day and braids to the back the next. You better go ahead and this afro cornrows. I don't know if she's going to come in next. She's probably going to come in with a high top fade or a jerry curl. Something. Stay woke. Clue in this transition. <laughs> and then she talks about the time that she was a Moroccan princess. I'm telling y'all, y'all better stay woke. Black woman, she coming for us. Tinsley. <laughs> So Luann is being the Countess, right? This is the thing. I love Luann. I can't stand the Countess. I, the only time I'm here for the Countess is when she's reading people because the Countess can read, okay? Oh, darling, even Versace makes mistakes. Um, what was it? Was it Versace or was it Gucci? Oh, darling, even Gucci. Man. It was one of them. I have to find the clip. But when she read that weird girl who lived in Brooklyn... <laughs> That's when she became my favorite. She lost me for Halloween, though, but that's okay. Anyway, Luann, the Countess, does this thing where she is just so above everybody. So she was married for like, what, seven days, got divorced, and she is giving Tinsley advice on what she should do. And Tinsley, who I respect her opinion, is just like, I don't want to take any advice from you. And Luann is not really the Countess. Is it not really getting it? She wants to give this advice and she wants you to take it because she's a Countess and she's lived and she's done this. And so you need to listen to her because she's right. And I guess Tinsley had enough of it because her response to her. Yeah, but you had a beginning that ended really fast. 
<laughs> but Luann took it like a champ though. She was like, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Y'all, I almost spit up my smoke. <laughs> this season okay because she is like just the way she's reading Luann is it's taking me out because she'll like get something off her plate or she'll move a napkin or something and she'll just be in like casual conversation and then she will just read her for filth and I'm like I'm not I'm not I'm not ready for it. Luann is telling Tinsley about how she doesn't want to talk about Tom. She's learned. She's over it. She doesn't want to deal with it anymore and Tinsley's just like well you threw him on us so like we would like to discuss him. And I'm noticing that there's a theme throughout all of these housewife shows where the ladies are just like they know personal things about the other woman, about the other cast members in the show. And I feel like the ones who are putting their lives out there are like really being open or the lives that they want us to see are really being open are upset that there are others who are like, I don't want to share this. I want to move on. I want to hold this back. I don't want to bring my husband on the show. I don't want my kids to be on the show. I don't want to talk about my divorce. I don't want to talk about my arrest. And the other ladies are just like, you can't do that. So I'm noticing a theme where there are cast members who are pushing cast members who are withholding information to speak. And I feel like this is what's happening with Luann, uh, Luann and Tinsley because Tinsley is just like, no, you have to talk about it because this was like a huge part of basically last season. And then she drops this and you still call yourself the Countess, but you're divorced. And Luann was like, well, it's Queen Latifah, a queen. Leave us out of it, girl. You made your bed. You better lie in it. I told you through the screen to not marry that man because that title was all you had because we all know you ain't got the coins and you did not listen. You dropped the countess for a five foot four playboy. Sis, you should have known. <laughs> I can't. I'm not going to be able to make it through this scene with Luann and Tinsley. Tinsley. Okay, girl, you better work for this apple. I am thoroughly impressed because when you are reading the Reed Queen of the Real Housewives of New York, you stepping up to the plate and I am, um, I'm impressed. I really, really am because the reads are just so quick and like she'll take a drink. She'll just do something. She reads Luann and then she acts like she hasn't said anything at all. Luann is so caught off guard because she's just like, did I just get red or like what? Like what is going Like she's trying to, oh my goodness. Tinsley is reading and shading her in the same breath. Bow down. Yes, sis, you better work because Luann is trying to drag Carol talking about, you know, because she's not invited to the marathon or whatever. Like, oh, well, you know, it's just some boy toy that lasted about three years or whatever. It's not a real thing. And then Tinsley is like, well, that boy toy relationship lasted longer than your marriage. <laughs> 9 one one talking about how good looking Adam is and then they show a picture of his hand. Bravo editors, you slip. Well, I've noticed that only rich women call gay men their gays. You know what I mean? Like I've never heard like a middle class woman. I love hanging out with my gays. Cause I feel like when you ain't got no money <laughs> and the gay person isn't your employee, I feel like you really gonna get red. You know what I mean? And I think that especially on these housewife shows, Erica Jane does it and so does Sonya. I hate that, you know, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, they do it too. I hate the fact that they, um, like, they, I don't know. I just don't like it. Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I just didn't like Sonya, like, calling her friend who happens to be a gay man her gays. Like, I love, I love when my gays come over. My gays are, it's like, they're not a pet. They're not an accessory. It's a human being and you are taking their sexuality and making it like this novelty and I don't know I don't like you don't come off as an ally you know what I mean you come off as some you come off as someone using them as some kind of accessory to make you seem cool or hip and it's just it's ugly I don't like it, it just struck me the wrong way yeah not cool Sonia no oh, cool. wait she's having a gay party <laughs> Oh, this season is just going to be offensive, I see. <laughs> oh, hell. So, so, you know what? This is like that ugly Nene Leaks party where she had 
girls and gays where like each woman like invited a gay man. I didn't like it, but you know what? The gay men showed up. Like guys, you, I know she got money. I know it's a chance for you to be on TV, but come on. You don't gotta go to every party. Ooh. Has anybody read them for, you know, let me go to Twitter to see if Sonya got read for this gay party. I don't even like saying it. Mm -mm. Sonya, dear, you are not um, a gay man trapped in a woman's body. <laughs> You're not. This is the thing. Women like that who, like, it's like those women who only go to gay bars or, like, gay clubs when it's time for them to, like, if any one of them has, like, a bachelorette party, it's like, let's go to a gay bar and let's, you know, dance with gay men. And it's like, you know, it's fun, it's cool, their accessories, yes, girl, wig, snatch, ah! It's not really being an ally to the community or really seeing gay people as people. It's seeing them as, like, these fun accessories. So Sonia puts herself in these parties. Like she won't surround herself with women, especially women who are younger, especially women who are richer, especially women who are in relationships. She will surround herself with gay men who are looking to be a part of a society that she is a part of, who will tell her what she wants to hear, who will make her feel good. Like she's surrounded by all these gay men in this party and they are just loving on her, telling her she's skinny, she's beautiful, she's snatched, all those things that you like to hear that she can't get nowhere else. This is what this is. This is a Sonya ego stroking party. So she brought her gays who she know her or her gay friends or her gay associates who she know one, one would want to be on the cameras. One would be a part of this foolishness because they're trying to get into a certain level of this society. It's, it's disgusting. But you know, at this point they using each other. So you know what gays get what you can get out of Sonya too. She using you to stroke her ego, stroke them pockets or the pockets of the men she with because we know she ain't got no money. You talking about Tinsley broke, you broke sis. Let's stop playing like they wasn't sharing your eviction notices all over the blogs. Stay well. Also, why are we just now hearing about Sonya's uh, gay parties? Like how, how many seasons has she been on this show? Has she been on the show since the beginning? Aren't they in like season 10? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense, Sonya. We, this is something that I feel like this messy station would have jumped on if Sonya was hosting gay parties. Quit lying. And you know messy Andy is going to bring up these gay parties. <laughs> yes, baby. Drag her at the reunion like you drag all them other housewives. He's so delicate with New York and um, he's more delicate with uh, Beverly Hills. Maybe it's the money, but he's very delicate with New York. But Jersey and Atlanta, ciao. <laughs> he gets them broads together. Of course, Aquaria is at Sonya's gay party. You Sonya and drag. Shout out to Tinsley's new nose. Money well spent. Good job, Scott. Good job, because that other one. Ooh, she was giving me coke nose last season. You know what I mean? Like, she just bumped a few too many lines. But this nose looks healthy, well-structured, really fits her face. Shout out to Scott's bank account. <laughs> if you got it, get it. Yes, Countess, read your resume. <laughs> I have a Pandora station. Does Tinsley have a Pandora station? <laughs> you know what? If this divorce gets her back into the music, I'm all for it. We need another hit. We need another hit. Money Can't Buy You Class was a classic. Now we need another. Come on, Countess, bring it. Money can't buy you. No. <laughs> I gotta give it to Sonya for keeping this lie about this townhouse, honey. <laughs> the city of New York has been trying to get that townhouse from you for ages. You better thank JPM because I feel like that's the only way that she's keeping it. It's dilapidated. It's falling apart. It's not, I don't even think it's healthy to live in. And now she's trying to rent it. You cannot rent it unless it is in a state to be rented. That place is like, no tea, no shade. It's like a project that is about to be, it's like, you know, demolished. It, 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 it's done. It's over. You even saw it when she had her gay party. I was just like, this place it just seems dirty. I feel like rats are there. Like it's just falling apart, Sonya. You gotta let it go. I think what she needs to do is sell it. Oh, you know what? She can't sell it. That's why she's trying to rent it. Because that the townhouse is in just such disarray. Like Sonya has not been keeping up with it. And it's really old. And when you have a, a an asset that's that old, a home that's that old, you really put a lot of money into keeping it up. And Sonya has not done that. So... I don't know who, you know what, she gonna get somebody to rent it. She gonna get some Bravo fans 
to rent that place. That's I feel like that's the only kind of tenant she's going to get because a real New Yorker sees right through that. And if a real New Yorker is going to pay that kind of rent that she wants to pay, you know, because she got to pay that mortgage. A real New Yorker is going to take her to task and she is going to have to put a lot of money into that townhouse and a lot of money that I don't think she has. That's why she getting up under Rocco because somebody got to pay for the repairs. It ain't Sonya. You know what I just thought about? Remember when she put her face in a bidet? Do y'all remember that? She put water in a, a like ice in this bidet and like gave herself a facial. That's when I knew that she was nuttier than a fruitcake and was going to be great on this show. Financial problems aside, mother is wearing this red. This red ensemble? Yes, sis. Work. I sound like Sonya. What is going on with me? Luann and Sonya becoming friends this season lets me know that they have pissed off a lot of people because what happens... When when you have pissed off so many cast members that you start to film scenes, like a lot of scenes with your enemy, that lets me know that there are a lot of people who were, who are like turning down scenes to film with her. Uh, she definitely is not going to film with Carol unless it's a whole group. She's definitely not going to film um, with Tinsley, especially after uh, what Dorinda said. Dorinda isn't really going to film with her unless it's a group. Like we haven't really seen them in like one-on-one -on -one scenes. And I think it's because one, Luann is trying to hold back this relationship. Two, Luann has really just done a lot of people dirty, especially in the confessionals. Because the fact that she is like butting up with Sonya, who dragged her Every second she got last season because she was <laughs> jealous, shocker, of the fact that she was marrying Tom. I just, it doesn't make sense for me because that was, that's still ringing in my head and I'm not even Luann. The thing that Sonya would say about Tom, the thing that Sonya would say about Luann, like this was a few months ago compared to like how they like start filming. So this just happened. Like she just said this stuff probably within the year that they have, um, that her marriage like deteriorated. Like I think, like I said before, I think they take off like three three months so this is really fresh so for her to be saying you're one of my good friends I love you that lets me know that she ain't got nobody to film with so she gonna make it work with Sonya oh this is going to be a messy season <laughs> no longer want to do the show because I really liked her. I mean, she was annoying, but I felt like I love the fact that she would just get offended out of nowhere. I love the fact that she kept on dropping P. Diddy. Like she was a lot, but she reminded me of some women in New York and I liked her. I think maybe she stopped doing the show because of her son's health. I don't know. Or maybe she just wasn't invited back, but I kind of miss her. I prefer her over Tinsley. Wait a minute, Tinsley is reading people down this season. Hmm, let me get back to you on that. So, <laughs> I tuned into this show for mess, okay? <laughs> Carol had me in all my feelings. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, like, oh, this, this is, guys, this is the season I feel like we have been needing. This is the season that we deserve. Like, I just did not expect that. That New York Marathon, uh, Carol, like, run, like, Carol, like, really being in it and really, you know, just pushing herself. I was, like, so encouraged. And then her mom cries. Roberto brought her that medal. I lost it. And then she said, I feel like I'm honoring my husband. Ciao. I, I was done. I was done. And also because I um, I lived in New York uh, and I moved right out of New York after 9-11 because it was, that place was my dream. That place, like I live in LA, you know, I'm working in LA, I'm getting booked, thank you Jesus, but New York was my dream. But I couldn't stay there after 9-11. Like I was just so... I don't know. I was just terrified all the time in the New York Marathon. I had friends who ran it like right after 9-11. And I, I remember being terrified, just like freaked out. And um, I watched this and I don't know. For me, I just realized why I fell in love with that city. Like, I, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but it was just like a really beautiful moment. It really reminded me of the beauty in New York that I experienced. 
and it really inspired me. I'm not running a marathon, <laughs> but um, I'm going, I am going to really try to push myself in places that I'm fearful, places that um, I don't really think I can do. Maybe, you know what? Maybe I will run a marathon. I don't know, but this was really inspiring. And I like, I don't know if you watched my other reviews, but I said that, especially about Atlanta, I like when they give us balance in episodes and seasons. And I feel like this was it. I feel like we got enough shade. We got enough drama. We got enough messiness. We got some tears. We got some throwbacks. We got a little bit of information. We also got some tea. And then we had this really beautiful, touching moment with Carol at the end. And ugh, I love her. Like she is one of my favorite housewives. And I know I said I don't have favorites, but Carol is starting to become my favorite. Just like her whole story. I feel like she's being very real. I never feel like she's playing any kind of game. I feel like what she tells us or opens up and shows the viewers I feel like it's the real deal it really really is and I don't know I'm, I'm in my emotional bag let me stop <laughs> ciao well next week we get some mess again we get the whole like Dorinda blowing up at Sonya and it happens because of course Sonya says something offensive to like really hurt somebody that is her thing Sonya has no filter and then we start to see the breakdown of Bethany and Carol and I don't want that because I felt like their friendship was the real deal but I knew it I knew it I said that Carol was only going to be able to take this relationship dynamic for so long because Bethany is a top dog that's how she has to be she has to be a top dog in each and every relationship her marriage you know her boyfriend and a girlfriend relationships you know her friendships her uh, work relationships she has to be the top dog and carol i did not like how she was being treated last season but carol is a grown woman a woman in her 50s and she accepted it so i minded my business but i just didn't like how bethany was able to like talk to her and change her mind and like i don't know i just felt like carol was better and stronger than that and i feel like maybe she sat back and watched that season and realized that she probably held back a lot of opinions or you know um change decisions not really wanting to but when you're with somebody who has such a strong personality it was reminding me of nini and cynthia's relationship yeah i get something different from carol i i don't get that she's a follower i don't get that she's a flunky she was playing that role but i feel like she could only do it for so long and i think something just snapped and the, it, the issue is with bethany you can't you have to submit like you guys can't be on the same level bethany don't operate like that and i think that is the issue that they have and i think the only person that bethany can really have like uh we're on the same level kind of relationship is people who can either match her in wealth or have more wealth then she feels like she needs to really um, do, you know, really work for that relationship. And I, and I, and so I'm not shocked that her and Carol are having a breakdown. I'm disappointed and I'm hurt because I thought that that was one of the real relationships that we had on this show. And it's unfortunate that it's breaking down, but it's going to be good TV. So I will be there to watch it next week. And I hope you guys come back and join me. And if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you for the following episode of The Real Housewives of New York. This is what we deserved. <sighs> Thank you, Andy. Love you guys. Bye.